Lake Tahoe is known around the world for its rare clarity, depth, and beauty. The lands that surround the lake are more than just a pretty setting for this mountain jewel. It is from here that the lake's water comes, the high Sierra ridges that form the watershed of the Lake Tahoe Basin. It has been said that Lake Tahoe is the place where the water meets the sky, but it's the land that holds the key to preserving this national treasure. The task of preserving and improving this watershed falls primarily on the U.S. Forest Service, which serves as steward to 80% of the land around the lake. In 1973, portions of three national forests were combined to form the Lake Tahoe Basin Management Unit. By treating the lake's watershed as a whole, the Forest Service is able to plan for managing an entire ecosystem, an ecosystem that has been greatly affected by human activity now and in the past. The first inhabitants of Lake Tahoe were the Washoe people. They lived off this land for hundreds of years and were known for their fine craftsmanship. Their descendants carry on this tradition and maintain a close connection to the lake. In 1844, John C. Fremont recorded the first Euro-American sighting of Lake Tahoe, and the basin would be forever changed. Trappers, traders, gold seekers, merchants, gamblers, lumberjacks, and crews to operate steamships were attracted to the lake. To meet the demand for lumber, logging operations began in the mid-1860s, by 1890, many of the hills in the basin were bare. Resort owners and estate holders, however, were concerned with preserving Lake Tahoe's scenic shoreline. And from 1880 to 1940, the basin served as a playground for the wealthy. In the 1950s, improved highways and snow removal equipment opened up the lake to a post-war generation that was upwardly and outwardly mobile. With this century of pioneering came progress and development. Lake Tahoe pioneers built a firm foundation on which today's young leaders are building a fabulous monument to recreation and good living. Tahoe today is one of the greatest recreational areas in the world. By 1990, 20 million annual visitors and 75,000 residents enjoy the basin year-round. Unfortunately, this rapid development has contributed to the urbanization of mountain vistas, increasingly hazy air, and the declining clarity of the lake. Complicating the management task is the wide array of landowners and resource agencies divided among two states, five counties, and two municipalities. The Forest Service works with a multitude of organizations and agencies, including the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency, which gives final approval to all new development in the basin, the Lahontan Regional Water Quality Control Board, and the Sierra Front Wildfire Cooperators. Well, there are other creeks that flow the Forest Service constantly interacts with these diverse, often opposing factions. Every group participates in forest planning by voicing concerns, offering suggestions, and reviewing plans. Some go a step further, 
They volunteer to work with the Forest Service on important projects such as trail work, informational tours, and renovation and repair. By listening to and working with these groups and individuals, the Lake Tahoe Basin Management Unit has become a local leader in public involvement. Located 6,225 feet above sea level, Lake Tahoe is 22 miles long and 12 miles wide. With an average depth of 1,200 feet, it ranks as one of the largest, deepest alpine lakes in the world. This depth and size contribute to the lake's color and clarity. Its waters are clear to about 75 feet making Lake Tahoe one of the world's clearest lakes. Protecting Lake Tahoe's water quality is the unit's most important job. One way to protect Lake Tahoe is to restore damaged watersheds because streams from these watersheds dump sediments and nutrients into the lake. State-of-the-art computers and old-fashioned backhoes undo years of damage caused by logging, grazing, road building, and uncontrolled recreation. The watershed staff uses a vast array of land restoration techniques, including rechanneling streams, creating wetlands, seeding barren slopes, and protecting stream banks. Monitoring the improvement of these projects is a critical step. Working together, watershed and fisheries experts measure stream flow, test water quality, and improve fisheries sites. Fourteen species of fish live in the basin's streams and lakes. Rainbow, brook, and brown trout are common, while the Lahant and cutthroat trout is listed as a threatened species. Using biological and physical data, the Forest Service is able to improve two miles of stream habitat annually. All management activities on the basin adhere to strict environmental standards. One such activity is timber harvesting. Because logging must be done in a manner that maintains the basin's water, scenic, and air qualities, Timber harvesting is complex and expensive. Commercial operations are sometimes restricted to working during the winter when snow protects sensitive lands. Traditionally, the amount of timber felled has been small. Unlike other national forests, the unit is not required to sell timber. Recent events, however, have led to a dramatic increase in salvage operations. Past logging and fire suppression practices have led to a forest type, mostly red and white fir, that is highly vulnerable to insects and disease, particularly during periods of drought. The dead trees are not only an aesthetic problem, they are also a major fire and windfall hazard. Because many of the lots in residential areas are national forest land, homeowners take a strong interest in Forest Service policies and practices. In order to reduce fire danger and improve forest health, the Forest Service is salvage logging the dead trees, thinning overcrowded stands, and planting drought-resistant pine seedlings. Leaving a few dead trees, either standing or on the ground, also provides food and cover for many birds and small mammals. Protecting nesting areas is a high priority. Timber harvesting is modified when occupied goshawk nests are discovered. The Forest Service protects potential nesting habitat for 12 to 16 pairs of the birds. Reproducing goshawks are an important indicator of the health of the watershed. A major study is underway to determine the best way to preserve and protect their habitat. Two 
federally listed endangered species, the peregrine falcon and the bald eagle, visit the basin. Wildlife specialists are attempting to re-establish nesting sites for both birds. The females have a much finer mouth. They do not get the hooked nose and the big teeth. Teaching and exploring the natural and cultural history of Lake Tahoe is a big part of the Forest Service mission. Because we're kind of mandated by law to protect the clarity and quality of Lake Tahoe. The stream profile chamber allows visitors to see fish in their native habitat and to read about stream ecology. In October, the annual Kokanee Festival celebrates the return of the Kokanee salmon to spawn in Taylor Creek. Thousands of people visit during the fall months to learn about fish in a natural setting. When the watershed staff received a National Stewardship Award, it used the funds to develop a new environmental education program in local schools called Trout Creek Living Watershed. This unique program includes both classroom instruction and year-round fieldwork that fulfill state science curricula requirements. The national forest lands of Lake Tahoe offer a wide array of recreational and cultural opportunities year-round. Lake Tahoe's popularity poses a serious challenge to the Forest Service mission of serving people while caring for the land. The Forest Service must adopt and enforce restrictions on certain visitor activities, such as camping in the desolation wilderness. This is the most heavily used wilderness per acre in the United States. The Forest Service also administers special use permits, such as Heavenly Ski Resort. Here, the slopes must be monitored for wildlife habitat and soil stability. Managing the Lake Tahoe Basin is an enormously complicated task. Of all the various means used to accomplish the Forest Service mission, personal contact remains one of the most effective. Working together, the Forest Service and the public can preserve and protect the unique qualities of Lake Tahoe.